Because they they come in handy. Yeah. You wash and them. And I wash some of them. You know, they, come in handy. <laughs> <laughs> they have a fit. Uh, I know. It costs a dollar for yeah. a bag of them. You know. That's why we Once use plastic instead of plastic. Once you write your name on it, you might as well keep it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Chris, but yeah, Chris, but yeah, I have several say of those bags. That the older generations are the ones that respond to the brother's pollution. It's not true. They have a fit when I keep, I love my Christmas glasses. Yeah, it's not true. And that, so when I keep my Christmas glass all day long, they say, would you want me to wash? And I said, no, I will keep drinking water out of my Christmas glass. Well, we'll wash it and you can get a plastic one. I said, I am using my Christmas glass all day today. But I've got to the place, I'm not going to wash it. I'll go get it back out covered. <laughs> Did, did he tell you about her with the napkins up at St. John's? No. Oh, no. Did she keep them? That was her latest finish. She, she collected the napkins. She had a stack of napkins that she kept, you know, one at a time off her food tray. Wow. She would use some of them, but they usually had two or three. She always had one on her lap and she'd wipe her nose. <coughs> When she wasn't looking, we'd grab a pile of them and throw them away. I mean, you know, <laughs> those people I'd make rounds, rounds on <laughs> clean Yes, exactly. sir, and that's the way they were cleaning out his parents' house. Don't get me started. But I got to put a plug for Bowie paper towels. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. This, this thing with Costco. Yeah. Mm, and, okay, so we get a case of A1 on because, you know, we can look at Well, you know, she might send one home with you because she's got A1 or whatever. Just fine. Well, then they go back like two weeks later and they get on sale. So we get another thing. Or if she had a coupon. Or if she had a coupon. <laughs> uh, didn't matter if she needed it. I had a coupon. You don't want to waste that coupon. <laughs> you don't want to waste that coupon. We had a water break in the basement. $260 worth of water. Yeah. 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 Ye
I'm Pastor Julia Fraser, the Director of Spiritual Services at St. Paul's, known to some of you, but not to others, where Martha was a beloved resident and the Cooper Apartments first at the Colony and later at the Ridgewood. I greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and welcome you to her funeral today. We gather to give thanks for the life of one who was a daughter, sister, wife, mother, grandmother, great-grandmother, neighbor, and friend to many. As we do so, let us seek God's holy comfort in our time of grief and commend her to his eternal safekeeping. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you today your servant Martha. We thank you for giving her to us to know and to love as a companion in our life's journey. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us your aid so that we may see in death the gate to eternal life that we may continue our course on earth in confidence until by your call we are reunited with all those who have gone before us. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear God's word of comfort as it comes to us from the scriptures. First, a reading from the scriptures about God's lifelong love. A gray head is a crown of glory. It is gained from a righteous life. God's righteous ones still bring forth fruit in old age and shall ever stay vital and green. With long life shall I satisfy them, says the Lord, and show them my salvation. Please do not reject me, O Lord, when I grow old, nor abandon me when I lose my strength. Turn to me and have mercy upon me when I am lonely and in distress. Help to strengthen hands that are weak and make firm knees that are unsteady. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, your God will come and save you. And when he does, the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. And those whom God has called his own shall enter Jerusalem with singing. They will all be filled with joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Next, from the words of the 23rd Psalm, which I invite you to say along with me if you would like to. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Finally, from the Gospel according to St. John. <clears throat> Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And when I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. This is the Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. 
We gather this afternoon to give thanks for a life that was long, small, deep, full, and of value. And I want to talk about these each in turn. I'll begin with the long part, which is pretty obvious from the get-go. Martha lived for 96 years, just short of a century, outlasting her two brothers and five sisters, her husband, and I'm sure many others with whom she was close. She was born into the roaring 20s. She lived through the Great Depression World War II, recurring waves of societal change, space exploration, globalization, the internet age, 9-11, and ultimately an international pandemic. It was quite a time to be alive. At the same time, I call her life long. I'm going to say that Martha's life was small, and by that I mean in no way small in importance, just small in <laughs> circumference. She lived her entire life within a pretty small radius. She was born and raised in Stoneboro, relocated upon marriage all the way into the countryside surrounding <laughs> Greenville. <laughs> And finally, later on in life, moved in town and up to St. Paul's. She did attend Duff's Business Institute after high school in Pittsburgh. And I know she and her husband enjoyed visiting their camp up in Marionville after his retirement. But for the most part, Martha lived her whole long life in Mercer County. This was not unusual for somebody of her generation, for there to be one area that you knew well, where you belonged, where you engaged, where you contributed, and where you made lasting ties. I think it's not often like that nowadays, where families are spread out all over the place, like yours is, Pennsylvania and Florida, and North Carolina and Utah, I think I read. But for Martha and others like her, small was a good thing. I think that was the case because a small setting gave opportunity for things to run deep. With the exception of brief employment at an insurance company, did I hear that right? Yeah. Martha, upon her marriage, stayed at home. There she loved Raymond, her husband of 61 years, raised their son, Ron, and daughter, Kathy, and made a good life for all of them. Now, Kathy, I'm sure that there are fun stories relating to your growing up that I just didn't get opportunity to hear, but Ruby Smith from the colony remembered a family story about Ron as a teenager that Martha apparently loved to share. I guess during high school, he let his hair grow long, raising eyebrows among some more conservative members of the community. But when one of them questioned Martha as to why in the world she allowed him to do that, she retorted, as long as he was living at home and eating at their table and getting along with everybody, she was not going to make a big deal about something as insignificant as his hairdo. <laughs> Sounds like a pretty wise mother to me. Family was all important to Martha. And I can't imagine a more fitting tribute to her that she died surrounded by the family that she loved so dearly. Church was important also. She was a longtime member of the Jerusalem Christian Church outside of Greenville and active there. Martha's was also a generation, again, somewhat different, I think, from the current one in which neighbors mattered. They were not just people who lived nearby, but they were people that you liked and did things with. 
And that was very much the case with Martha, who thoroughly enjoyed her neighbors out in the country in Marionville and up at St. Paul's. I think many of us across the pandemic have experienced, maybe in some ways that have been surprising, how smaller can be really good when it comes to activity level and relationships. And Martha knew this long before we found that out. A life can be small and still very full. And Martha's was a full and good life. Her two children and their spouses, her four grandchildren, and especially, I'm told, the four great-grandchildren, all of them, individually and together, brought Martha an overflow of blessing in her life. She loved being with you all. She loved hearing from you, whether nearby or far away. And she loved talking about you to her friends. <laughs> Martha was always a very social and fun-loving person. She liked parties, and as one staff member said, was always all smiles. I'm sure there are many examples of her sociability from earlier on in her life, but the ones I know about date from her time at St. Paul's. I got to know Martha upon her move to the colony through her attendance at our monthly chapel services at the Kiefer Building. These were followed by coffee hours and goodies so where we could all sit down and chat with one another, and she liked that a lot. She also enjoyed coming to the monthly birthday parties at the colony, to picnics held across the summer months, sometimes I think with you, Ron, and to any activities, I'm told, that included musical entertainment. Martha was fortunate to live in the Cooper apartment building at the colony, which Kathy rightfully noted was very much like a sorority house for senior citizens. <laughs> Among her neighbors were Ruby Smith, Jan Eastler, Lois Eastlick, and they all had a marvelous time together. If the weather was nice, all of them could be found sitting out on the front porch, often, according to Ruby, talking about clothes and hair. <laughs> Jan and Martha liked to run out for roast beef sandwiches together at the Arby's and to visit the flea market in the shopping center on Hadley Road on Sunday afternoons. But my all-time personal favorite Martha story comes from Colony Life Enrichment Director Mariah Carson, uh, Corson, who recalled this. I'm not making this up. Martha attended our first annual National Margarita Day celebration <laughs> at the colony. We feasted on Mexican-themed cuisine, including fried ice cream for dessert. We bowled with pineapples and coconuts, and we played Ring the Flamingo. That evening, Martha and her friends sat in lawn chairs around kiddie pools filled with sand, watching beach scenes on the large screen in front of them while wearing oversized party sunglasses. <laughs> it was a great night and I still have the group photo of it hanging in my office. Now according to my calculations, Martha could have been a spry 93 on this particular National Margarita Day celebration, which I think says a lot about the enduring nature of her good spirit. <laughs> What was true in terms of Martha and people was also true in terms of Martha and animals. She loved cats and dogs, apparently equally. She once had her own and made friends with others' pets as well. People remember her being really excited when Ron and Jean brought to the Golden Retriever to visit her. And of course, she loved the two Boston Terriers, Minnie and Missy, who belonged to Tina, the nurse at the Ridgewood. 
who visited her regularly in her apartment there, one with a great deal of youthful enthusiasm and the other a little bit more <laughs> refined in his manner. Suffice it to say, Martha's life was full of people, of animals, of relationships with both, of sharing, and of joy. Martha's life was long, small, deep, full, and I don't need to tell you, of tremendous value. God loved and blessed her her whole life long with faith, with love to share, with gifts to contribute, and with strength to persevere in times of trial, which she certainly needed across the past two years in particular. We give thanks this day for this long, small, deep, full, and valuable life, grateful for all that she was able to give and to receive across 96 years, for the eternal life which now awaits her, and for the lasting legacy she leaves behind in the lives of those that are gathered and watching. Amen. If there's anyone who would like to share anything further, you would be welcome to do so at this time. Otherwise, we'll continue with the prayers. Let us pray. God of love, we thank you for all with which you have blessed us, even to this day. For the gift of joy in days of health and strength, and for the gifts of your abiding presence and promise in days of pain and grief. We praise you for home and friends, and for our baptism and place in your church with all who have faithfully lived and died. Above all else, we thank you for Jesus, who knew our griefs, who died our death and rose for our sake, who lives and prays for us now, and who taught his own to pray in this manner. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O oh God, the generations rise and pass away before you. You are the strength of those who labor, and you are the rest of the blessed dead. We remember all who have lived in faith, all who have peacefully died, and especially those most dear to us who now rest in you. Give us in time our portion with those who have trusted in you and striven to do your holy will. To your name be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant Martha. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of all your saints in light. Amen. Let us listen now to another favorite hymn, Eagle Swings. Thank you. 
dwell in the shelter of the Lord, who abide in his shadow for life. Say to the Lord, my refuge, my rock in whom I trust. And he will raise you up on eagles' wings, bear you on the breath of dawn, make you to shine like the sun. You need not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day. Under his wings your refuge is faithfulness, your shield. For to his angels he's given a Martha will be interred at the Shenango Valley Cemetery in Greenville at some later time. We will go ahead, however, and conclude today with the service of committal. I called to the Lord in my distress, and the Lord answered by setting me free. I was pressed so hard that I almost fell, but the Lord came to my help. None of us lives to himself, and none of us dies to himself. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Those who believe in me, though they die, yet shall they live. And those who live and believe in me shall never die. In sure and certain hope, of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. We commit, commend to Almighty God our sister Martha and we commit her body to its final resting place, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. The Lord bless her and keep her. The Lord make his face to shine upon her and be gracious unto her. The Lord look upon her with favor and give her his peace. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, by, Almighty God, by the death and burial of Jesus, you have sanctified the graves of all your saints. Keep our sister Martha in the company of all your saints, and at the last, raise her up to share with all your faithful people the joy and peace won through the resurrection of Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you this day and remain with you always. Rest eternal grant her, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon her. Thank you, Reverend Fraser. At this time, this does conclude our services. If you would like to take a few final minutes to say your final goodbyes, you may do so at this time. Thank you. Thank you.